There is exactly two months left until the start of the GCSE season at the time of recording this video. We're now reaching the time of year where you start to feel the most FOMO. Some of your friends might already be done with studying, some of them might have not even made a single flashcard yet, and you're just somewhere in the middle. I understand exactly how you feel, because this time of year was also the most important time of year for me. It was a time of year that for me determined whether I was going to get the top grades or not. And so it's important that you take this time of year very seriously, because if you don't, you might not get the top grades. That being said, how do you get the top grades if you only have two months? Now first, you need to understand one thing which is we don't have as much time as we would usually want the basis the backbone of basically all of the revision i've ever done is called the nft method notes flashcards and then test questions thing is the nft method requires you to have a decent amount of time left usually over three months but since we only have two months we're gonna have to slightly change the method for starters we're gonna have to ditch the first part the notes part of the technique we can break the learning process down into three parts understanding the content memorizing the content and then applying it the nft method is designed in a way such that it tackles all three you make notes to understand the content and then you make flashcards to memorize the content and then you do test questions to apply the content that being said we can ditch the notes and combine memorizing and understanding the content into flashcards now listen this might sacrifice some of the benefit that we would get from making notes but with this little time left that's honestly the biggest bang for our book and so how do we actually implement this well first we're gonna have to look at structuring our studying if we want to make the most out of the little time that we have we can't just wing it we have to structure our studying every time you sit down on your desk you need to know exactly what needs to be done now i don't use the traditional revision timetable because i personally think that it's quite redundant instead i use what i call the retrospective checklist now i made a whole video on why you should abandon the traditional revision timetable and instead use the retrospective checklist which you could watch at the end of this video but to keep it short what i would usually do is that i'll list out every single task that needs to be completed for every subject and then put a checkbox next to each one and now that i have all of the tasks for each subject i'd count up the tasks for each subject and divide it by the number of days until the first exam for that subject let's say i have two months until an exam so 60 days and i have 30 tasks for a single subject that means on average i'd have to do a task every other day to keep up as the days go on and i'm doing the tasks i could check out how i'm feeling with every subject and decide whether I need to do more or less for each subject. You might be asking, what do you mean by a task? And it's basically just anything that you need to sit down and do. For example, we said we're going to do flashcards and then test questions. A task would be making a deck of flashcards for topic seven of physics. And another task would be doing the 2022 paper, for example. And so now that we've structured our studying, how should our studying actually look like? Well, like we just talked about, in general, your studying should be a blend of flashcards and exam papers. Let's first start with flashcards. For flashcards, you're going to have to stick to the syllabus. A common mistake that a lot of people make, including myself back then as well, is that I'd pick a YouTube video or a textbook to make flashcards out of. But then the problem is, I'd copy the YouTube video or the textbook word for word, verbatim. And the problem with that is that when someone's teaching something through a textbook or a YouTube video, they're going to add a lot of supplementary information just to give you a better understanding of the actual topic. And that's completely fine. But once you understand a subject at its core, there's no point in going back and going over that supplementary information again. And so for that reason, every time I made flashcards, I'd have the syllabus of whatever topic I have open. And so every time I come across a piece of information and I think to myself, you know, this is quite useful, let me write it down into a flashcard. I'd first quickly glance at the syllabus, make sure it's actually there, and then put it into a flashcard. If it's not there, if it's just some waffle, then I just skip on to the next piece of information. Now, when you come across information, it's also very important that you summarize it and put it into your own words when you turn it into a flashcard. The idea is you should retain as much information as possible, but still make the words as literal as possible. Because when you're memorizing through flashcards, there's going to be a visual element. Every time you look at the flashcard, you need to actually remember the words on the flashcard visually. And so if you have a whole paragraph on every single flashcard, it's going to make it very hard for you to memorize anything. Now, before I move on to how you should be doing exam questions, I first wanted to thank the sponsor of this video. Now, I speak a lot about efficient studying and how that, since we don't have that much time left, every single minute counts. And so for that reason, I'd like to tell you about SA Pro. SA Pro is an online writing platform that connects talented freelance writers to young people that need their services. Let's say for whatever reason, you need to write an essay for academic or personal use but you don't have the time to draft and then redraft and then redraft again a whole essay all you need to do is just go on essay pro scout through all of the writers they have and pick one based on their ratings their reviews and their pricing and let's say you're unsatisfied with their work you get unlimited free revisions and a money-back guarantee not only that though essay pro comes with a bunch of perks like 100 percent plagiarism and free content and even free turnitin.com reports if you're interested click the first link in the description right now they're also offering a free 20 percent discount on top of the already student-friendly pricing if you use the code SHIGS. Thank you SA Pro and now back to the video. 
Now with only two months left, it's gonna be quite hard to completely finish all of your flashcards and then move on to practice questions. That's why with little time left, I'd recommend mixing the two. Let's say I just finished making a deck of flashcards for a topic. I'd immediately go and do a couple of practice questions for that topic to really solidify the content that I just learned. Now this technique gives you another dimension of understanding immediately after you learned the content. And that makes it so that you're more likely to remember it in the future. You see what usually happens is that students will make flashcards, go through them for the first couple of weeks, and then choose to do practice questions. You see the problem with this is that you're taking in the information and then moving it into your short-term memory by making the flashcards. And then as you go through the flashcards more through space repetition, you move it into your long-term memory. But then when it comes time to do practice questions, you've already solidified that information. And so if you want to add the whole dimension of you know practice questions and the understanding that it gives you, that has to go through the whole process again, it has to go through your short-term memory and then your long-term memory. And all of that wastes a lot of time. So the best case scenario is that you do a deck of flashcards for a topic and then you immediately go and do practice questions for that same topic. And then of course you don't neglect the flashcards every week, you go through them once at least. And now my last point, which might be the most important one, is that you need to take care of your lifestyle outside of studying. You see, even if you have the best techniques in the world, if you don't sleep right over the next two months, you're not going to do well. Me personally, in the weeks that I'm sleeping right, I've seen a jump of two grades in all my tests and whatever compared to the weeks where I don't really sleep that well. And also if you look into it, most of the learning that we do is brought together when you study. It's brought together when you actually sleep and so if you're not sleeping right you're not completing the learning process i've used this analogy before but imagine you're making a cake and you mix all of the ingredients together but instead of putting it in the oven you just leave it on the countertop if you came back two days later would you be surprised that it's not baked yes you brought all of the ingredients together but you had to put it in the oven for everything to come together and bake likewise if i'm studying that's just me bringing the ingredients together but if i want to consolidate it i actually need to sleep and i need to sleep well so the information is really digested and transferred from my short-term memory to my long-term memory and also if you're not exercising you're missing out on a lot of benefit it might sound weird at first because you need to take an hour or two out of your day which you could be used to study to exercise instead the hormones and endorphins that are released when you exercise are directly correlated to how well you do on an exam you see gcse's are a competition you need to beat 95 percent of the people to get a nine and so if everyone else is just putting in more hours to study but you're focusing on your lifestyle factors like exercise and sleep that's how you're going to gain the edge over them also as a small little announcement i've extended the offer that i was running for the ultimate guide to acing your gcse's if you join the program within the next week or so you'll get a free 30 minute coaching call with me as a bonus and don't take it from me just look at these testimonials from people who took the program if you're interested click the second link in the description